Hey guys, it's your bull boy Cory, and we're back here in the kitchen with another cooking episode. And today we will be making some fried mushroom sandwiches with a arugula and onion slaw. And this sandwich is mostly based off of, no, not mostly, entirely based off of the Cajun po' boy, which features a fried seafood of some sorts, normally oysters or shrimp, on a French roll with some lettuce, onion, tomato, the the works, normal sandwich vegetables. Um, here though, I am using the oyster mushrooms to emulate the seafood because of their chewy texture that resembles somewhat like seafood. So now I am soaking the mushrooms in some fake buttermilk or unsweetened almond milk and lemon in order to give the breading something to adhere to. Now I don't know if the lemon actually cultures the almond milk like uh, actual buttermilk is, but uh, some of the milk was cloudy and it looked like there was lemon pulp in it, so maybe it did its job in changing the chemical nature of the almond milk. And, you know, I had hoped that this mixture, and by marinating the mushrooms in it, uh, a flavor would be imparted onto the mushrooms, but I don't think this was actually the case. I had hoped that the acidity of the lemon would be able to penetrate the outer skin of the mushroom, but, uh, alas, I didn't catch any hints of lemon in the final product. And now we are going to let that sit for a bit, and as you can see, I've diligently prepared a handful of, aru of arugula and half an onion that was sitting in the fridge for the salad aspect of my sandwich. I uh, paired it with the other half of the lemon, some olive oil, and some pepper to make a dressing of sorts, and I felt the salad was the only part of the sandwich that I could improve on. Uh, and you would know that this was the case because my dad didn't eat it. Uh, my dad has the drive to eat whatever extra food is lying around. Uh, today, we pulled some fried Korean sea seaweed rolls out of the back of the freezer, which looked like bird feed pellets, and he ate one while uh, I couldn't even swallow a bite. And then, of course, my weirdo sister ate six of them. But anyhow, uh, for the breading here, you see me making uh, a breading mixture. Uh, originally, I was going to use a batter, a beer-based batter, um, but that's not really what is used in the traditional southern po' boy. And when I was originally formulating the idea in my head uh, and decided to do a breading uh, instead of a batter, um, I think that I wanted to go for more of the chicken tender type breading with all the crunchy little imperfections and cracks but instead I use this cornmeal which gives it a grainier crunchy texture and this is the old fryer oil from last night and looks very appealing my mom made tempura in it and twice fried it so it had really good use and also all that flavor from all the vegetables and batter infused itself with the oil and also made it kinda weird and stale but that ultimately didn't affect the final product here um, here I am testing a bit of the batter, which I just mix the buttermilk mixture as with some flour of the flour mixture and tossed it in just to see when the oil would be ready. And so while that little nugget of deliciousness was frying in the oil, I got all the mushrooms breaded and ready so they would make a glorious splash into the oil. They would sizzle and roar like the tide, and of course it didn't but it eventually got to that point once I had heated the oil up enough. Um, originally, I heated up the oil too much and was splattering everywhere, and so I lowered the heat. Um, that probably is why I didn't get that satisfying first sizzle. And uh, the lighting doesn't do it justice here, but you could see all of the little molecules of cornmeal, and those are really what define the texture of this dish. And so the rest of the frying was fairly straightforward. Just turn them over a couple times, let them sit into the oil until they're nice golden brown. Um, an issue I found was that the cornmeal created a sort of cloud of, of itself all over the oil. And by the end of it, it was the oil was not visible at all. So um, if you're doing a lot of these, don't let the cornmeal get don't get too much cornmeal in the oil or I don't know maybe it looks bad or it'll burn so once you've cooked all of the mushrooms you are ready to assemble your sandwiches of course you can just eat them by their themselves as finger food chug them like french fries or or chicken fingers but putting them on a sandwich 
allows them to unlock their fullest potential, allows them to be complemented by a great series of other flavors and textures. And so now, taking a closer look, we can see how crispy and imperfect it really is. And, um, oh, oh, what? Oh, gosh. Oh, that's a nasty sound. But, uh, you know, I left it in anyways because my friend Ian loves watching some Nikocado avocado. And this is all I use for the sandwich. Uh, for the bread, I had a baguette, which I toasted lightly with some vegan butter. And now I'm spreading the vegan mayo all over it. And I will later follow it with the Dijon mustard in order to increase the Frenchiness of this sandwich. And this is quite possibly the most delectable meal I've created on camera. It screams richness and fat. And it just makes your mouth water if, I guess, you've been deprived of meat and eggs. So, I definitely recommend that you guys make this. Maybe change up the salad and go for a leafier green or maybe add some tomatoes in for a little bit of added sweetness. And then before I end off the video, I want to say that I might stream a 4th of July barbecue stream where I will cook some more pizza and some vegetable skewers if I can get my camera, new camera, hooked up to the Wi-Fi. Uh, but that's all for now, folks. Thank you for tuning in to another installment of Cory the Herbivore's cooking channel episode thingamabob. See you later.